as long as it insists on communism, the Chinese Communist Party will attack Taiwan. The United States will send the military to defend Taiwan. A third world war between communist totalitarianism and liberal democracy will inevitably break out. Is this the fate for all mankind? Can we change it? Who can stop the war between the United States and China? Sun Yat-sen Tan, a man who has been dead for one century, yet still influences Chinese politics both today and tomorrow, and who is even a hundred times more important than Mao Zedong. As the godfather of all statesmen in both China and Taiwan, Sun is the only man who can restore the peace. Why? Four reasons. First, Sun is a pioneer of China's democratic revolution. Second, he is a good friend of the United States. Third, he is the founding father revered both in China and Taiwan. Fourthly, he is our trump card for democratizing China. I'll explain this to you now. Born in 1866 and died in 1925, Sun overthrew China's last monarchy, the Qing Dynasty, which was ruled by the Manchu and was full of tribal barbarian despotism. Its most brutal policy was the obligatory queue order and the role of cut the hair or the head, which forces all Chinese men to change their beliefs and lifestyle. Just as in the Umayyad Caliphate, the Spanish people were threatened by Islam or death. Beyond that, maturing censorship mechanisms undermined freedom of speech and killed millions of people. However, the Chinese people have never given up the revolt to restore the Confucian democratic regime. Among these heroes, Sun was the providential man who is born once in 500 years, as a Chinese saying by the philosopher Mengzi goes. On October 10, 1911, the revolution led by Sun toppled the Qing dynasty. On January 1, 1912, the Republic of China, the first republic in Asia, was established. Sun was elected as the first provisional president. Even today, October 10th is still the National Day of Republic of China. The Chinese call it Double Ten Day and celebrate it annually, both on mainland China and in Taiwan. Why could Sun's revolution succeed? Because he the only one who created a new republic model of Confucian democracy, which follows Western democracy and adapts to Chinese tradition. It is based on his separation of five powers constitution, including three Western branches, executive, legislature, and judiciary, as well as two Chinese branches, the examination and control. The examination power guarantees the quality of democracy by a national contest system to select politicians and civil servants. The control power guarantees the integrity of democracy by surveillance of all public powers. Both of them are inherited traditional Confucian democracy. Today, the Five Powers Constitution is that of the Republic of China and influences that of the People's Republic of China. Inheriting Sun thought, Yuan Tao, leader of the China's political reform team, is creating a new model of humanistic democracy. It assimilates the advantages of both Western and Confucian democracies. At the most advanced model of democracy, it can democratize China and also help to reform American democracy. In order to build a new democratic governance, Sun put forward the theory of three principles of the people as national liberty, civil rights, and people's livelihoods. 
National liberty symbolizes pacifism. It calls for respecting the independence and traditional culture of all countries, strengthening exchanges between them, committing to perpetual peace in the world, and ultimately establishing a union of all mankind. This is the highest ideal of the Chinese nation. Sung at the last lyric of the national anthem of the Republic of China, civil rights symbolizes a democratic and constitutional government with the first principle, all for all, and the first vocation, training a civil society. People's livelihoods symbolizes a quality life for all people. It must develop both a material and spiritual civilization to create. New morality, according to Sun, a democratic government should constitutionalize the importance of education. Due to this ideal, Taiwan's current constitution stipulates in Article One Hundred and Sixty Four that educational funds should account for no less than fifteen percent of central fiscal expenditure, twenty-five per province and thirty-five per county. Thus. To construct a harmonious society, Sun proposed to limit the power of capital, prohibit monopoly, and maintain the justice of distribution. It is because of his Sino-American educational background that Sun Yat-sen could build such a new China in a democratic era. At thirteen years old, Sun sailed from southern China to Hawaii. With his elder brother Sun Mei, who was embraced by Free America and realized his American dream as a rancher in Honolulu, Sun Yat-sen entered the elementary school in September 1879 and the Oahu College in the fall of the 1882. During this time, he found his own American dream, bringing liberty, democracy. And independence to China for more than Chinese dream. In November 1894, Sun founded the first revolutionary organization, Revive China Society in Hawaii. His brother and many friends in America fully financially and politically supported his revolutionary activities for building a republic China. For ten years, Sun traveled around America, Europe. In Southeast Asia, to call for China's democratic revolution in public and press. In 1905, Sun joined together Chinese revolutionary organizations from all over the world to form the United League in Japan. Its strategy is based on his Five Power Constitution and the Three Principles of the People. Sun was born in China, but his spirit. Was freeborn in America, the United States therefore became the cradle of this Republic in China's founding father and Chinese democratic revolution. In addition, Sun's successor, President Chiang Kai-shek and First Lady Song Meiling, the younger sister of Sun's wife Song Qingling, were also good friends of the United States. In 1943. During her visit in Washington, as the first Asian woman to address the U.S. Congress, Song Meiling made a speech for liberty and world peace. You, as representatives of the American people, have before you the glorious opportunity of carrying on the pioneer work of your ancestors beyond the frontiers of physical and geographical limitations. They are brawn and fused, braved undauntedly, almost unbelievable hardships to open up a new continent. The modern world lauds them for their vigor and intensity of purpose, and for their accomplishments. You have today before you the immeasurably great opportunity to implement these same ideals and to help bring about. The liberation of man's spirit in every part of the world. I can also assure you that China is eager and ready to cooperate with you 
and other people to lay a true and lasting foundation for a sane and progressive world society which would make it impossible for any arrogant or predatory neighbor to plunge future generations into another orgy of blood. The teachings drawn from our late leader, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, have given our people the fortitude to carry on. We in China, like you, want a better world, not for ourselves alone, but for all mankind. And we must have it. It was also the will of Sun Yat-sen and all Chinese people. Sun is the only man who can unite the hearts of people both in mainland China and Taiwan, because he is revered as founding father of both republics. Due to the civil war in 1949, today's China is geopolitically divided into two parts. The mainland, ruled by the People's Republic of China, as established it in 1949, and Taiwan, ruled by the Republic of China, as established it in 1912, but exiled in Taiwan since 1949. But there is only one China, because according to the two Chinese republics constitutions, both sides see themselves as the sole legitimate government representing the whole of China, which has 5,000 years of history. Moreover, each side take the reunification of the whole of China as its constitutional mission. The two China's republics are two sons of the same mother, the modern republic in China founded by Sun Yat-sen. From Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong to Xi Jinping, all Chinese statesmen consider themselves as the legal heirs of Sun. He is official founding father of the Republic of China since 1940 and the unofficial founding father of the People's Republic of China. But all the statesmen of CCP see him as godfather. His name is the first individual name mentioned in the preamble of their constitutions. The Republic of China declares in the first paragraph the National Assembly of the Republic of China, by virtue of the mandate received from the whole body of citizens, in accordance with the teaching bequeathed by Dr. Sun Yat-sen in founding the Republic of China, and in order to consolidate the authority of state, safeguard the rights of the people, ensure social tranquility, and promote the welfare of the people, does hereby establish this constitution, to be promulgated throughout the country for faithful and perpetual observance by all. The People's Republic of China declares in paragraph 4, The revolution of 1911 led by Sun Yat-sen abolished the old monarchy and established the Republic of China. The names of Mao Zedong and the People's Republic of China appear in the fifth paragraph. What we need to notice is that there are only Sun Yat-sen and five presidents of the People's Republic of China mentioned in its constitution. Sun is the first, and the other five presidents in order are Mao Zedong, Deng Xiaoping, Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, and Xi Jinping. According to Chinese culture, this order is very important for understanding the intention of the CCP after Mao's death. Sun in the previous generation, the party had intended to restore traditional political ethics. In his speech of October 2001, former President Jiang Zemin called Sun Yat-sen the pioneer of the democratic revolution and claimed that his party is the most loyal successor of Mr. Sun Yat-sen's revolutionary cause. In fact, after 1949, since Weidou, Song Jingming served as vice president and acting president of the People's Republic of China. In 1981, she was appointed honorary president of the People's Republic of China shortly before her death. Constitutionally, 
the first Madam President of China's Republic was Song Qingling. Tsai Ing-wen, who has been in power in Taiwan since 2016, was the second. The Republic of China was founded by Sun. The People's Republic of China believes that it is based on his spirit. The two republics are one where you are in me and I am in you. Together, they constitute a complete modern China. According to their constitution, Taiwan is only a local territory of China. The Republic of China calls it the free area, and the People's Republic of China calls it Taiwan province. Unfortunately, the Democratic Progress Party government in Taiwan preaches that Taiwanese are not Chinese and that Taiwan should be independent. This is the direct cause of the current cross-strait conflict. But the fundamental reason is that mainland, ruled by communism, is not a real China, whereas Taiwan, ruled by Sun's Confucian democracy, is the real China. The essence of the cross-strait conflict is that it is between communist totalitarian imposed by Russia and the authentic Confucian democracy of China. As soon as China restores its democratic tradition, not only will there be peace across the strait, but China and the United States and all mankind will be at peace. Can we make it a success? Yes. Because Sun Yat-sen is our trump card for democratizing China, its success requires four elements. First, to unite Chinese people all over the world, we need a common spiritual idol. That is Sun Yat-sen. To replace Mao's statue on Tiananmen Tower with Sun's, we bring hope for peace to all the Chinese of the mainland, Taiwan, and overseas. Second, there must be a practicable strategy. Sun's strategy that successfully overthrew the last monarchy of China will be used to kick out the last of totalitarianism today. The third is that we have a new constitution of new democratic China based on Sun's separation of five powers. The fourth is that we are good friend of the United States in the core of our diplomacy which was also Sun's will. We believe that a good Silo-American relationship is the guarantee of the world peace. We also believe that only a democratic and humanistic China would be embraced by the world and prevent a third world war. Sun Yat-sen is immortal, and his philosophy will bring the world hope, peace, prosperity, and harmony not only do we have the American dream, the Chinese dream, but also we have the dream for all mankind, and that is committing to perpetual peace in the world and build a union of all mankind. Together, China, US, we can realize the dream of all mankind. Yes, we can. <laughs>